I now want to go on um, quite, a, quite a discussion about this notion that pre-existing connectivity may be a major constraint in wiring up the brain. So first, we need to talk about how would you look at structural connectivity in human brains? And I haven't really talked about this yet. The main method for being able to look at the, uh, to be, for being, being able to get some sense of this in human brains is to use another kind of MRI imaging. It uses the same machine, it's an MRI machine, but it's gonna produce anatomical images that show us not those nice pretty pictures of brains that you're used to, but that show us the direction of water diffusion, okay? And so the, the principle is pretty simple. Here is a picture of an optic tract, right? Um, and that what it's showing you is that if you see an optic tract is a whole bunch of axons oriented like this, connecting retinal ganglion cells to what? Where do the retinal ganglion cell axons land? Going through the optic tract, Chocofe. LGN, LGN, lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus, okay? So there's that fiber bundle, but the main point for now is that you can see that each of those fibers has a layer of fat around it, and the upshot of all of that is that water likes to diffuse more in this direction than that direction. That's the key idea of diffusion imaging. It tells you which direction water is diffusing most. Okay, water is constrained by the uh, fat layers around those axons, that myelin. And so you get diffusion more in this direction than, than orthogonally to it. And so the, the, the details of the physics of this kind of imaging, which I'm totally not explaining, are, are such that what you get out is a picture at each point in the brain of what is the direction of maximum diffusion at that point, okay? And so here's a little picture of lots of little vectors saying, at this point, water wants to diffuse this way or this way or this way or this way. Okay, everybody with me so far? So that's, you get a whole bunch of little teeny vectors all through the brain showing you the orientation where water wants to diffuse at that point. And the idea is that's telling us which way fibers are going at that point. And we can therefore infer, we can follow these things using a method, method called tractography where we just follow those little vectors through the brain. And that's what's happened here. At each point in the brain, you start at one point and you just follow these vectors and see where they go. Does that make sort of sense, sort of intuitively? I'm skipping over lots of details, but I want you to get the gist, right? Okay, so these beautiful pictures that you may have seen before um, are diffusion tractography. They show you um, our best guess of the long range connections between one part of the brain and another based on diffusion tractography. Okay, and on the theory that you should wear your data whenever possible, here's mine from my lab. Whoops, I'm tangling it here. Um, so I love these things, they're so beautiful. One of my postdocs, who's our tractography whiz, gave me this beautiful scarf, isn't this nice? And so you can see even more clearly here that this is a cross section through the brain in this axis right here. And so these big um, green guys are the connections that go from the back of the head down the temporal lobe, down the visual pathway that we've been talking about all along. Okay. That was gratuitous. I just thought it was fun. <laughs> okay, so tractography is cool. It makes gorgeous pictures and gorgeous scarves. Um, but, um, and it works really well to discover big fiber bundles. Like there are lots of parts of the brain I showed you with that gross dissection picture last time that they're big chunks of white matter where lots and lots of parallel fibers go like this. And tractography works well to find those. You can really see those very nicely with diffusion imaging. However, it's not so hot for discovering uh, finer connections. Um, it's better than nothing, but there's a lot of ways in which it fails, okay? So for example, if you have water, if you have fibers crossing in some part of the brain like this, you'll get diffusion in this direction and this direction, and the tractography algorithm will be finished. It won't know whether to keep going straight or whether to turn, okay? So that's just one of many reasons why diffusion tractography is lovely and wonderful and the best we have in, in vivo brains, but it's not so great. Anyway, it's all we have, so we use it. 